World of Tanks Blitz is a complex yet interesting game, but one thing that should be very easy is picking the right tanks to purchase, because at the end of the day, there are merely a few vehicles that are truly worth your money. All those vehicles in the shop right now are rather even more obscure vehicles that are interesting for collectors. Let's find that out, and don't forget to like and subscribe. In the resource section, we do have a treat with the Times 5 XP certificates that I only recommend to advanced players because if you are a beginner, do not grind your tech trees quickly. Try to learn each tier separately and go slowly. But if you already have a couple of tier 10s, then these can be an excellent deal to get more tier 10s quite quickly. However, unfortunately, these cr include credits, which makes them quite of a bad deal because let's say we look at this bundle. This has 500,000 credits they have to pay money for when you can earn 500,000 credits in about 20 minutes. In the tank section, we start off with the Relentless and Inept. Uh, intrepid, sorry, but it's about the same thing, really. We have the Byzantine C45, which is a cock shell. Like, you have one actual shell and then one emergency shell that you can't ever use unless you want your DPM to go to basically a thousand. Not really great in that regard. It is a solid vehicle, but not one of the primary premium tanks that you want to have in the game. If you are a tank collector and you're looking for something extravagant that plays different to the majority of other tier 8s, then this can be an interesting pick there. But overall, for the general majority of players, this isn't an ideal pick right here. And the Samoa SM doesn't make a lot of sense because the T-77 was sold like five minutes ago. So it doesn't really make sense to pick up this somewhat slight downgrade over the T-77 when the T-77 was not just at a better price, but also is a better vehicle. So kind of doesn't make any sense to do that. Now the Times 5s, obviously they're again locked to the vehicles, which makes them kind of pointless because while you still can grind crew XP with them, you can also grind crew XP with tech trees while also grinding real XP. But then the boosters, they can be used variably, which means you can also use them for tech trees and premiums. You can use the gold credit boosters for your premium. You can use the combat boosters for your tech trees. So those are not too bad, but the value of this bundle is generally not the greatest. And I wouldn't really you know, recommend it unless you are a tank collector. Then we have the Action X, which is a vehicle I will be playing later. Now the times... Five here are unlocked, which adds quite a bit of value, but the Titan, you can sell it for gold. That's the only value it has. You, you can sell it for gold, so yeah. And the Thunderbolts are not really worth thinking about, unless you're a tank collector. I don't ever really talk about camouflages, and it has a very good reason, because while you don't even own the vehicles that you play, they at least add some difference to the game. Whereas a camouflage does literally nothing but change the look of your tank, and most of the time, when you're in battle, you will not see the good side of the camouflage anyway, rendering them quite pointless, which means I ascribe zero value to them. And as always, the same thing for the containers. While gambling is in any case morally wrong, at least the free gambling containers are, in terms of a value perspective, not that terrible, because, I mean, they're literally free, but advertising for gambling is still very wrong. Most of these containers, if not all of them, are negative chance crates, which means that you invest more money into the crate than reward that you get out of them that you could have otherwise spent on getting a vehicle or getting resources and you would have gotten more stuff for your money. And now if you spend it on the crates, you get a negative return for your money. That's how most of the crates work. You simply lose value by opening them, which makes them very terrible. And this draw also includes the current second biggest human disappointment after this. That is the garage gear container, because here you can gamble for something you can't even see. Because while the garage gear is in the garage and obviously does nothing besides sit there and can't even see it, because the default view of the vehicle will always be this angle, but the garage gear is here. Which means you will never see it if you log into the game or anything. Otherwise, you have to consciously turn around to actually even see the damn thing. I mean, if it'd be placed here, its value would still be zero. But it being placed out of sight just makes it that much more hilarious. With the draws, you can play the first one or two tiers because they tend to still... They're still wrong because it's gambling. But they tend to be, in terms of a value perspective, still somewhat okay. Because for 50 gold, you might end up with something that is more worth more than 50 gold. 
but be very aware that once you get to it right here, see, that is cost one gold. That is what we call marketing, and your human brain loves to fall for tricks like that. Even though it might seem enticing, don't fall for it. Only go to tier one or two at maximum in these draws. It is not going to be worth it, and this is purposeful marketing to try and guide you to right here. Now, last week I wasn't 100% aware of how the event is going to work because I make all the videos before the events, and I make this video also before Friday, so, you know, that's what you're gonna get when I have a life. The elephant is free if you get enough first classes, aces, and whatever, and that is a great thing because then you can sell it for 3,750 gold, which is lovely. You can even sell it as many times as you want to, so if you're still out there grinding and you need some gold for free, selling the elephant is a great way to achieve that. Now here we go with some gameplay with the Action X, and there's a reason why I haven't been doing gameplay for much, because for that I have to play the game, and especially with the new matchmaker, I mean, I still do the same average damage, but the win rate has been, uh, no? But here's the thing. I started to realize something. That, first of all, I've already said everything, right? A, I've made a lot of videos, so there's a lot of things that I've already said, and I don't really like repeating myself, so here we are. I mean, there are people that talk the entire time and say nothing, but I kind of don't want to do that. So here's the thing. What is important about vehicles? is that you also understand things yourself. Because while watching guides and reviews can be extremely helpful, and you should always watch multiple reviews before making a final decision on whether to get a vehicle or not, there are great YouTubers out there, not that one, but there are great YouTubers out there that you can watch to get input, especially, for example, on tank destroyers. I'm the wrong address for that. But for a vehicle like the Action X, one thing you should immediately see is, hmm, it does have 10 degrees of gun depression, it does have decent third armor, it can be played well hull down, and it also has high DPM but very low alpha damage, which means that is a big disadvantage for this vehicle, because that means that you have to constantly peek the vehicle, you can't really hide behind the corner much, because then you're missing out on damage. You can't just sit somewhere and reload in peace, you have to always be firing, always expose yourself to the enemy. And the more you're exposed, the more you will get shot at, which isn't really a great thing. This vehicle only really works with its DPM if the enemy is incompetent and sits in front of you without moving, which does happen quite a lot. But this vehicle requires enemy help to make it really work, because you cannot trade with anybody. To rate medium tanks will out-trade you, and uh, they can peak in four seconds, they can hide behind a corner, and you can do nothing about it. So, that is a very big disadvantage, the 190 alpha damage, which is why I generally don't recommend the vehicle like this, because it's just too specific. It's good, but it's somewhat specific, and if you are a fan of this vehicle, then hey, that's a great thing, but I generally don't recommend vehicles like this, because there are better options out there that might not have the DPM, but that have better all-round playability, and that can actually trade with vehicles, and which makes them also easier to play. Doesn't mean this is a bad vehicle. But here's the thing. The most important thing for you in World Tanks Blitz and in life, really, is that while guides are incredibly helpful, is at the end of the day, you have to be the one to find what is good for you. What works for you? What kind of playstyle do you want to apply? What kind of tanks do you want to play? What kind do you want of player do you want to be? Do you try to play the highest damage possible? Or do you simply try to do average and have fun? What is important to you? Reading stats is an important part of that because, honestly, you can look at stats yourself. Like, they're in the garage. And if you never open the garage stats panel, you can't expect to be a decent player. I mean, you don't need to learn the average damages and alpha damages of any vehicle, really. But having a general clue of what you're playing and looking at the things yourself is extremely helpful. So I do encourage you, don't just always go out there and ask what other people do. Try to find the path yourself. What is best for you? And then, if you can't get any further, that's when you seek advice. But first, look at the things yourself. Especially tank stats and the maps. <sighs> yeah, fuck this shit. This is gambling. It's bad. But the, va the value is good, but it's bad because it's gambling.